In the episode The Thin Yellow Line, Banana Guard 16 secretly painted an amazing mural which he then tried to graffiti in the Candy Kingdom streets. This video will examine what the mural depicts and what those depictions represent. This is the entirety of the mural in full, and I'm gonna break it down starting from left to right. The leftmost part of the mural is only seen at the very start of the episode as Finn and Jake first walk past it. We don't see it later in Banana Guard 16's secret hideaway. It depicts three comets, though possibly it's the same comet in a sequence, with the rightmost making contact with the backside of the Mother Gum, the hive mind source from which gum beings, including Princess Bubblegum herself, spawned from. This immediately makes me think of the Catalyst Comet, and the comet that hit 1000 years ago around the time of the Mushroom War is one we have nearly no knowledge on. Radiant light emanating from the point of contact with the Mother Gum makes me think the comet is somehow related to the Mother Gum's existence. It's unclear what sort of mythology Banana Guard 16 is referencing here and how he knows of it, but the only inference I see here is that the Catalyst Comet played some part in the Mother Gum's conception. I discuss this subject further in my video on magic lore in Adventure Time, so check that out if you're interested. The next part of the mural shows the Mother Gum happily sending Bonnebel off into the world. She appears far older than when she first split from the Mother Gum. We can chalk this up to the mural being Banana Guard 16's imagination of the event, or simply creative liberty to incorporate different snapshots in time in a flowing manner. The medieval-like pennant flags represent conquest and imperialism, the establishment of Princess Bubblegum's empire. The intricate golden rings essentially make up a halo. They remind me quite a bit of Christian art from the early Renaissance and prior. Halos are utilized in the iconography of various religions to indicate divinity, sacredness, holiness, or somebody's status as a ruler or hero. This is directly applicable to Princess Bubblegum. She's seen as a goddess and a ruler. The halo is creating the feeling that the creation of PB's empire was a divine event. Before I move on, I have to mention how the lighting in this section of the mural is softer and brighter than the rest of the mural. We even have sunbeams breaking through the clouds and causing the sky to sparkle. The color choices used create a comforting feeling, especially when compared to the middle section which is much darker and gloomier. The left part of the mural is celebrating the rise of Princess Bubblegum. Her origin story is meant to be a glorious occasion. Now onto the middle section, which is colored a subdued, nearly eerie blue hue, and rather than inciting a joyous feeling, it creates a feeling of unease. Nettie appears serpent-like, which is interesting seeing as how BG-16's imagination flashback showed him appearing like a more ferocious version of what Nettie actually looks like. So I gotta assume the serpent appearance is more creative liberty than anything else. We know that sometimes Marceline flies into the Candy Kingdom at night to hang out with Princess Bubblegum, and the mural includes her bat transformation appearing rather menacing. People of Ooh know of Marceline and her musical talents, but I'm not sure if they're necessarily aware what she looks like in her bat form. Either way, the impression given is that seeing this creature flying in the night sky is frightening, and that this is a recurring event in the Candy Kingdom. I like how Marceline was given glowing red eyes while being illuminated by a light shade of blue, that shade of blue being the color her eyes in that form actually happen to be. The part of the mural featuring the Gumball Guardians along with Goliath and Stormo, I find it rather unclear what is being depicted here. Do the Banana Guards think the Gumball Guardians keep Goliath and Stormo in check, and vice versa? Do they think they are keeping watch on the citizens, and if so, is this intrusive, or is it welcomed? The psychic energy lines, or whatever the heck these are, they're a golden color, similar to the halos, so does this imply the Gumball Guardians, Goliath, and Stormo are thought to be scanning the Candy Kingdom and keeping it secure and safe? I find this the most puzzling depiction in the entire mural, so if you've got ideas, share them in the comments, there's just a lot of options as to what this might represent. We see the character locked away behind bars in Banana Guard 16's Imagination flashback, and while we have yet to find out who this character is, I immediately think of PB's Uncle Gumbald, simply because his name has been dropped in the series before. And here at this site, my great Uncle Gumbald cut down all these taffy trees in a single night. My Uncle Gumbald built this cabin with his bare hands. I spent my summers here when I was younger. This seems like a story arc that has yet to be touched upon. 
The goop with the many eyes? That confused me for a while, but after giving it some thought, I came to a hypothesis about what it might represent. The goop represents the surveillance system Princess Bubblegum used to have, which spies on everything occurring in her kingdom. Peacemaster's words in the episode Nemesis provide weight to this hypothesis. Its presence has infected every home, every place of business, even here, in this very room. Yes, this foul creature watches us even now! <gasps> Clearly the surveillance system isn't an actual goopy creature, but perhaps this is creative liberty, runaway urban legend, Legends, or a mixture of the two. Lemon Grab's head, I feel, is mostly self-explanatory. The candy people see him as an aberration when it comes to Princess Bubblegum's creations. Lemon Grab doesn't gel with the rest of the candy creations. He's abrasive and frightening. Put you in my oven! He's a Frankenstein's monster. And as for the image of his brain, well, Princess Bubblegum has literally messed with his brain before. Literally. The final component of the mural is Princess Bubblegum's radiant, gigantic form standing in front of the Banana Guards, with her swan behind her. You can feel the reverence and awe Banana Guard 16 feels for Princess Bubblegum from this portrayal, a feeling that is no doubt shared alongside the rest of the Banana Guards. The halo-like rings once again indicate her divinity, and Bonnebel comes off as both something to marvel and fear. Her looming stare isn't malicious, but it would certainly make one tense, and her eyes and expression are unknowable. You cannot read her and what she's thinking, you can't read into the motives of this divine ruler. I think at the end of the day, Banana Guard 16 and Finn describe her best themselves. She's an unknowable goddess! She's amazing, and she's flippin' scary. But nice! The mural from the Thin Yellow Line is a fantastic artwork, and I hope you enjoyed my breakdown of what it depicts. If you'd like, check out my review of this episode or other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.